Mr. Speaker, I, I wish to make a statement concerning the future delivery of paediatric congenital cardiac and interventional cardiac services, PCCS, for the population of Northern Ireland. At the outset of this statement, I wish to reiterate that my key priority throughout this process has been and remains to ensure the delivery of a safe, durable, high-quality service for these vulnerable children. In that context, I have also sought to ensure that the concerns which have been raised with me by parents and by clinicians have been fully and effectively explored. Members will recall that on 7 May 2013, this Assembly resolved that it noted the publication of the preferred option document by the PCCS Working Group and the related Children's Heartbeat Trust Report, calling on me to reject the recommendation of a Dublin-only service for the future commissioning of regional paediatric cardiac surgery and interventional cardiology, and to select a model which retains primary provision and the ability to operate on emergency admissions in Belfast. In responding to the motion, I said that there is no easy solution to all of this. I hear from one side that if you take a decision to remove services from Belfast and have surgical services provided outside Belfast, children will lose their life. I hear people from the other side saying that given the complexity of paediatric congenital cardiac surgery, children will lose their li life if the service is not based at a larger centre. I remarked then that you need the wisdom of Solomon and a whole lot more to get this right. It is a hugely challenging and an emotive issue. It was never stressed far from my mind and is, is incredibly difficult to square this circle. From the outset, I have been clear that, if at all possible, I want to avoid the need for children from Northern Ireland to travel to Great Britain for heart surgery, except for the most complex cases which require highly specialised treatment. I believe that this is right for two reasons. Firstly, parents should not be placed in a position of having to travel overseas with their child because of the strain that this can place on family life at a time when they wish to be close to their vulnerable child, but may have other children at home to care for and jobs to hold down. Secondly, I have made it clear that I would wish, if possible, to see children's heart surgery retained in Belfast so that we can respond to those relatively few emergency situations where the child's chance of survival might be increased by being operated on in Belfast. I also believe that by retaining a surgical capability in Belfast, our capacity to maintain associated paediatric services, primarily interventional cardiology, over the long term would be strengthened. The recommendation of the PCS Working Group that the children's heart surgery should in future be primarily commissioned from Our Lady's Children's Hospital in Dublin did mark a step forward in that this recommendation holds a prospect that the majority of children and their parents would not have to travel to GB for surgery, whatever long-term model emerges. I recognise the significant efforts made by the working group, the Health and Social Care Board and the Public Health Agency to find a solution to this challenging issue. I understand fully and agree with their position that safety considerations in the delivery of this service are of paramount importance. At the centre of this is the question of how to run a 24-hour 7 service that meets all of the standards. Clinical advice tells us that surgeons doing interventional work should be doing in the order of 100 of these procedures each year individually to maintain skills and expertise. Our patient numbers in Northern Ireland are so small that we would never be able to reach the recommended capacity levels on our own. The recommendation that was put to me by the working group is based on the fact that Dublin is a centre with a potential capacity to deliver a sufficient volume of procedures to meet clinical standards. However, this would mean the ending of surgery in Belfast, and before I could consider such, I have to be fully assured that there is no feasible, available option to retain surgery in Belfast. Therefore, I want to look at other potential options before making a final decision on this important matter. Having considered all of the advice that has been put to me, it is my view that the only prospect for retaining children's heart surgery in Belfast on a long-term basis 
is to forge a Children's Heart Services integrated network arrangement between the Belfast Trust and the Dublin Children's Heart Centre. This network offers the prospect of a single service providing surgery in both Belfast and Dublin. I can't guarantee that such a model <coughs> would necessarily provide a solution in the longer term. But it is only right that I should exhaust every avenue to find out if it would be possible to deliver a model such as this. It is also only right that I am guided by the best possible expert professional advice in considering this. Such decisions matter too much to get it wrong. With this in mind, I have worked closely with my counterpart <coughs> in the Republic of Ireland, Dr James Riley TD, to establish whether we could create the conditions to allow a fuller assessment to be made of possible options for the delivery of cardiology and cardiac surgery for congenital heart disease on the island of Ireland. Such an all-island approach represents a much broader consideration of potential service models than previous reviews were at liberty to consider. I am pleased to inform the Assembly that Dr Riley and I have been able to create these conditions. And I will now relay to you a joint statement that Dr Riley and I have agreed, which will be issued today by our respective departments. Minister James Riley, TD, and Minister Edwin Poots, MLA, today together announced that a team of three international clinicians will carry out an independent assessment of current and future needs for cardiology and cardiac surgery for congenital heart disease in the Republic of Ireland and Northern Ireland. The assessment team will describe the existing hospital services in both jurisdictions, outline options for service configuration and governance arrangements, and report to both ministers jointly, <coughs> recommending the most appropriate model that meets the population health needs and other requirements of both jurisdictions. The assessment will, in this way, address the needs of children and adults in relation to congenital cardiac surgery on the whole island. It is due to start in January 2014 and be completed in six months. When the ministers receive this independent assessment, decisions can then be made on the optimal service provision, which it is intended will be implemented for these services as soon as possible. The ministers recognise that the development and implementation of any safe and sustainable model of care requires careful planning, effective engagement and buy-in of all stakeholders, in particular family representatives and professionals, and this assessment is seen as essential to the achievement of that shared goal. In the interim, pending the completion of the assessment in June 2014, health service management and clinicians in the Republic of Ireland will continue to work with their colleagues in Belfast to provide and develop support to the services in Northern Ireland end of joint ministerial statement. <clears throat> the team will be chaired by Dr. James Meyer, consultant cardiac surgeon in Boston Children's Hospital. The cardiology expertise will be provided by Dr. Adrian Moran, consultant cardiologist in the Maine Medical Centre Portland. An anaesthetist expert will be confirmed to complete the team before it commences work in January. The team will be supported by specialist uh, professional nursing representation and other expertise is necessary. The terms of reference for the team are set out in the annex circulated to members with my statement. I want to thank Dr. Meyer and Dr. Moran for agreeing to take forward uh, this assessment and look forward to receiving their report. Mr. Speaker, I'd like to record my thanks to Minister Riley for his efforts in working with me to secure the short-term arrangements and the assessment to be carried out by external experts. I believe that the assessment by this external team will bring international best practice and fresh thinking to bear on this challenging issue. It provides a mean of, means of addressing the need for cardiology and cardiac surgery for congenital heart disease on the island of Ireland and to identify the most appropriate models that meet the population health needs and other requirements of both jurisdictions. While the assessment by the international team of experts will address the long-term future of children's heart surgery in Belfast, there is no more immediate a situation to be addressed in respect of the short-term delivery of this service following Professor Wood's retirement uh, later this month. At the work, as the work of the international expert team on a long-term solution has taken place, Minister Riley and I have agreed that health service management and clinicians in the Republic of Ireland 
will continue to work with their colleagues in Belfast to provide and develop support to the services in Northern Ireland. I very much welcome this commitment, and the detailed arrangements will be finalised by health service management and clinicians north and south in the days ahead. As this is an operational matter, it would not be appropriate for me to comment further on this at the moment. However, I wish to make it clear that some children whose procedure is considered to be of a high risk will continue to be transferred to centres in England for surgery in line with risk management arrangements. An important point in all of this is that each and every case will be given individual consideration and the most appropriate location for the procedure to be carried out will be de determined on the basis of clinical judgment. I also wish to inform the Assembly that I have been assured that the current PCCS service in Belfast Trust is safe and will continue to be the safe. It is nonetheless a fragile service and we should not underestimate the challenges which low patient volumes present to sustaining such services. I therefore intend to take every available measure to ensure that the service in Belfast is as robust as possible and in the weeks ahead Children's heart surgery will transfer from the Royal Victoria Hospital to the Royal Belfast Hospital for sick children. Staff will also receive training in the use of ECMO to support those very sick children who require support for their hearts and lungs following surgery. Both of these developments have been requested by the cardiac team in the Belfast Trust as a means of further strengthening the service. Mr. Speaker, None of us should be in any doubt of the expertise, skills and dedication of the staff providing these services, nor indeed their care and compassion in supporting the parents in extremely difficult circumstances. Those considerations in the safety of these children have remained to the forefront of my mind. I believe it is appropriate at this point that I should pay tribute to Professor Freddie Woods for the service and dedication he has given to cardiac patients from Northern Ireland. Indeed, the entire paediatric and genital cardiac team at the Belfast Trust provides a first-class service for the children of Northern Ireland. Mr. Speaker, to conclude, I hope that both the arrangements I have outlined and the assessment by the external experts will go some way to assuage the concerns of all those who have expressed concern about the future of children's heart surgery and interventional cardiology in Belfast. We have come a long way from the original reports which would have removed surgical services and potentially undermined cardiology services as well. I have on many occasions met parents, surgeons and cardiologists. I have also visited the Clark Clinic and paediatric and intensive care and witnessed the care provided by clinical and nursing teams and the level of support provided by parents to very sick children. I wish to express my thanks for their patience in what has been a long drawn out process. It has been protracted because the solutions are complex and will potentially cause considerable upheaval and it will be some months before I am in a position to reach a final decision on the long-term future of the service. But I believe that when that time comes, I will have had the benefit of having explored every possible option to securing a high-quality paediatric congenital cardiac service for the children of Northern Ireland. That has always been my clear aim and continues to be my goal. I trust that the Assembly, parents, families, clinicians and the public recognise my only desire is to act in the best interests of everyone involved. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Order, members, before I... Order, order, order. Order, before I call the Chair of the Health Committee, Mayor McLaughlin, there is quite a number of members who want to make a contribution been asking a question to the statement this morning to the Minister. Can I ask members to be brief? And hopefully members being brief will get all members in who want in to make a contribution to the statement. Maeve McLaughlin, Chair of the Health Committee. Good uh, and can I thank the, uh, the Minister for his statement today. Um, whilst this is uh, an interim arrangement, uh, I think it's a good day. Uh, I think it's a good day for the children and their families, and, and I welcome that. I specifically want to acknowledge, uh, Mr. Speaker, the need to secure the Heart Services Integrated Network on the island of Ireland. And I think that's an important message, and I welcome the Minister's leadership in relation to this. I want to very much welcome the fact that surgery 
some surgery will be maintained in Belfast. That is good news for the island as a whole, and it is certainly good news for families. But can I ask the Minister specifically in relation to his statement, because I note that he talks about the detailed arrangements in the short term that will be required between the Belfast Trust and the support from Dublin. Um, can I ask the Minister, therefore, to give guarantees that in the short term there will be no gaps in relation to this vital, vital service and the children who need surgery here and can access surgery here in Belfast will have that surgery here in Belfast. Well, thank you, Mr Speaker. I, th I think, first of all, we need to recognise um, that Dublin is willing to support us in this and that Dublin clinicians are willing to support us in this. And I trust that the short-term support that they will give will be something that will develop into the future. But I think it's a very important step that is being made that we will have um, people with the expertise on this island um, who will be able to travel to Belfast and provide that support for us, and who our clinical team will be able to um, confer with and work with and, and um, develop their skills with others of real expertise um, on these issues. So I think that that is of considerable importance. I think, and as far as possible, we want to secure as much surgery as possible in Belfast. Uh, but in all of this, um, we have to take a step back and allow the clinicians to do their job, whether it be the cardiologists or the surgeons, in conjunction with the parents, and give the best possible clinical advice to parents as to what can achieve the best outcomes for their children. We want to support the, the parents in, 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 in supporting their children, uh, and the best means for us to do is to create um, the opportunity uh, to provide this care in Belfast, um, as well as Dublin and, and in England, um, and for the clinicians to decide where is the most appropriate place in conjunction with those parents uh, for the children to receive such surgery. I say, as members will know of the House, the chair of any committee of some latitude around asking a question to the Minister, but that's where latitude ends. And I can understand, because of the importance of the statement this afternoon to the House, that members may be tempted uh, to add further statements. Let's have, question. Let's have a question to the statement. Jim Wells, Mr. Wells. I thank the Minister for his statement in what I think we all agree is one of the most complex and difficult issues that any minister could face. And he has outlined the way forward as far as the assessment team is concerned. But as he knows, uh, I think he's made a uh, reference to it, the lead surgeon retires today in the Royal, in the Clark Clinic. Could he reassure us that uh, that person will be replaced? How confident is, is he he will be re replaced? And what will happen in the interim? Well, certainly Belfast Trust are seeking a replacement for uh, Professor Woods. And there has been interest in it, which I, I greatly uh, are I'm very, very pleased about. Uh, and I do think that the work that we're doing now will be instrumental in, in the delivery of that. If a surgeon is to come to Belfast and to commit to Belfast in conjunction with the other surgeon that we have in Belfast, um, then I think that being part of a larger team and having the support of a larger team um, and having the ability to develop their expertise will be very important for the surgeon at a personal level, also very important for the people um, that the surgeon will be providing care for, uh, because you want the person who is carrying out uh, the, the surgery uh, to be maximising their skill base and to ensure that they are well equipped to deal with the eventualities that will come before them. Fergal McKinney. Yeah, thank, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, this morning we met with some of the families directly involved, and part of their consideration, of course, is around delay and indecision. And uh, we might have some concerns about how this would further inject uh, some delay, uh, as well as um, uh, the quality thresholds demanded by the commissioners. At least part of the consideration here is around the weakening of the team generally. Mr. Wells has referred specifically, but in a general sense, uh, what, what uh, guarantees can the minister give? that this six months won't leave, lead to further weakening of the team overall in Belfast? Well, we have a very strong cardiology team in Belfast, and I just have to pay tribute um, to the cardiology team because they um, carry out amazing work and have uh, the confidence of um, both, both the patients and the parents uh, in the work that they do. 
and uh, I believe that the decisions that we are taking today will help ensure that the cardiology team uh, have confidence that we are listening to them uh, and that we are seeking to arrive at the right solutions, not the risk solution. Um, I think, secondly, uh, we have a commitment from the existing surgeon in Belfast that uh, he wishes to continue to serve in Belfast. And we are attempting to uh, get to the point uh, where that surgeon will have the necessary support uh, to allow him to continue to practice in Belfast, on children in Belfast, uh, and also to develop his skills. Uh, so everything that we are doing is about ensuring the sustainability of the service. Um, but we also need to ensure uh, that we uh, have the safety uh, for the children as well. And those two elements are absolutely key. And again, um, I can't do it without the assistance of others. And I greatly appreciate the assistance that is being provided to us by others in this instance. Robin Swan. Mr Swan. Thank you very much, Mr Speaker. And I sincerely thank the Minister for his statement. He knows that's hard meant. Can I declare an interest, first of all, Mr Speaker, as having a, a 10-month-old son who's just recently went under cardiac surgery and is the chair of the all-party group on congenital heart disease? Can I congratulate the Minister on setting up an expert team of clinicians rather than administrators and managers to give this advice, because I think that's crucial in this. But, Minister, in your terms of reference, and it's quite specific in this, I want to ask, under point 4b is sustainability, and you mentioned it in your last answer. Can you give the House the assurance that the same criteria for sustainability won't be used as was used in the last Safe and Sustainable Review, which was discredited in England and Wales, because that's what put the Belfast surgery under, under pressure and under threat at the first. Yes, I thank the member for his question. Can I wish him, his wife and, and young Evan all the best for the future? And I, I know that he has received excellent care, and there, there really is fantastic care available uh, for children with um, congenital cardiac uh, problems, and, and I'd have to say, as well as that, the, the, what is provided for us in England uh, in terms of the, the skills that, uh, that, that the, the, they bring to the table there is absolutely fantastic. Sustainability is about how we can actually provide a service which is robust, uh, which ensures that we we'll have that safety, uh, which will ensure that we have the continuum of expertise um, on site and that uh, we don't provide something which is second rate. And I know that for the member and indeed all of the other families, they do want a service in Belfast which is uh, not as good a service as it is elsewhere. And that's where we, we fall into a problem, Mr Speaker, in that we just don't have the numbers uh, that will sustain the service in that way, and that's why we have to look to others uh, to provide us support. And working in a team uh, with another institution is something which is absolutely necessary. So this report is not along the same basis as the Kennedy report and the Safe and Sustainable. This is a report which is based on what, how best we can provide services uh, for the children in Northern Ireland, the children in the Republic of Ireland, and how we can work together uh, to provide that service for those children. And I hope that um, we will be able to provide more and more surgery both in Belfast and Dublin uh, as the years uh, pass by and indeed the skills that are developed um, uh, on both of those sites will ensure that potentially less children have to travel uh, to England to receive surgery, um, but albeit it's something that is there for us, I wonder if that's absolutely necessary. Ian McCarthy. Mr McCarthy. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Um, during this uh, further six months delay, there will uh, need to be safe and sustainable services for children born while the Minister is awaiting for this group to report. How do you, Minister, plan to monitor that these services and training are provided adequate service now that Professor Wood is retiring? Well, uh, in respect of all of that, um, the Public Health Agency, the Health and Social Care Board have very important roles in ensuring that standards are met. And, uh, that is something that they will continue to do. Professor Woods' absence um, will be filled and supported uh, by clinicians of standing uh, from Dublin who will provide us that support. And, you know, we should not underestimate um, the effort that will be involved in their part um, and the challenges that they will face 
Um, so we do need to be appreciative of, of their um, offer to us in that respect and that we will be able to sustain um, a service in Belfast in the six-month intervening period uh, whilst we work towards a final solution. Uh, and it's very important that we get the right solution out of this. And I have confidence that the team that is looking at it um, are a team with the requisite skills, but also a team that um, can understand families' needs as well. And that was, came through to me very clearly uh, whenever I prof met Professor Meyer uh, earlier this year. Pam Brown. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And can I also welcome the very positive statement, which is uh, very welcome news to the House this morning. Can I ask the Minister if he considers that cardiac surgery could serve as a positive example of common sense collaboration between the two jurisdictions? Yeah, well, I, I suppose others have, have looked at issues about North-South and, and they've always had a political dimension. Let me be absolutely clear that there's absolutely no political dimensions here. This is about children, it's about health care, and it's about saving the lives of children. And anybody who would say, you know, Pooch is a traitor because he's went down this particular route, I would be a traitor to the children of Northern Ireland if I didn't go down this particular route. It is absolutely critical that on issues like this, particularly where there is rare diseases and and uh, illnesses um, which are uh, less common, that we work very closely together. And I know that the folks in the Republic of Ireland will be delighted to work with people in GB when it comes to other rare illnesses, and indeed on this issue, are very happy to have children treated uh, in England. So there's absolutely nothing political in the nature of this. This is purely about children's health care and about providing the best possible health care for children. And if we can't collaborate on something like that, I think there'll be no hope for us at all. Mickey Brady. Mr. Brady. Gorham, I got the Concordia. I too thank the Minister for his statement. Um, and could I ask, the Minister has advised that Dr. Mayer and his review team will recommend the most appropriate model that meets the uh, population health needs and other requirements of both jurisdictions. Uh, could the Minister give us some idea of what issues might come under other requirements of both jurisdictions? Well, I think for um, clinicians, they will need to have the confidence that the service they are providing is the best possible service. Clinicians will not want to compromise the safety of any child that they are providing care for, whether that be the cardiologists or indeed the surgeons. And therefore, it is very, very important that um, that aspect of it is given full consideration. Uh, whenever I met Professor Maher, uh, it struck me that, that they carried around 1,000 surgeries per year, which is twice as many as is carried out um, on the island of Ireland. And in doing that, he indicated that they did it at a number of sites, uh, including one site which is just four miles away, because the parents had a confidence in the hospital that they were used to going to. And he was very, very clear that, that huge considerations had to be given to the needs of the parents and the families. So this isn't purely an issue about what the clinicians want. It's about how the clinicians can provide the best possible safe service, and but also meet the needs of, of parents and indeed the children who need those parents um, at their bedside as much as possible uh, over the period of that care. Uh, so I think that we have established a team, and I can't guarantee any outcomes here, but we've established a team that will take all of these issues into account and hear them fairly. It will not be a rushed report. It will not be something that will just suggest we should do the following in an offhand way. It will be something which will have huge consideration applied to it. And whatever comes out of it, uh, then we will know that it has got full and proper assessment of all of the issues involved. David McElveen. Mr. McElveen. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I too would like to thank the Minister for his statement this morning. Uh, the Minister has just mentioned in relation to the international team that have been set up to uh, help uh, with this review. I wonder could the Minister assure local parents, which are obviously the, 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 the parents that, that we want to support this morning, um, can he assure us that the local parents will be uh, included in this procedure, that they will be brought along uh, with this review as well and kept fully informed? 
Yes, there has been a very strong lobby um, fr from the parents, and I appreciate that. And uh, certainly, they will be kept in involved uh, in the process. I should say that at the outset of all of this, um, <coughs> David Simpson, the MP, <coughs> brought two families to meet me uh, the McKee family and the Flaherty family. Um, and little Grace McKee and little Jake Flaherty was with, with us that day. And uh, there were obviously children who were quite unwell. And consequently, I received a, an invitation from Julie Flaherty to come and visit them in hospital, um, which I did. And uh, Jake was very unwell at that point. And uh, he did go on for a number of weeks and, and celebrated his birthday shortly after that, but only a couple of days later um, passed away. And I made a promise to myself that I would do my darndest to ensure that we sought to deliver a service for these children in Belfast. And that was always preeminent with me. So I wanted to do it for we Jake. Mr. McDonald. Mr. McDonald. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And could I thank the Minister? Indeed, could I congratulate the Minister and welcome the progress that he has made here uh, on this highly sensitive issue? But, uh, Mr. Speaker, could I put on the record the debt of gratitude this House and this community owes to Freddie Wood, who came out of retirement to help us sustain a service over the last number of years in Belfast, a quiet, unassuming man who, who has done us a powerful service in keeping going. Mr. Speaker, when my colleague Fergal McKinney spoke about the parents, and indeed I joined him this morning, and those parents and their concerns outside Linen Hall Street. But could I ask the Minister? if de-skilling will be an issue around the sustainability, because it is a big concern for many of the staff involved. And can he reassure us that de-skilling will be on the agenda, and perhaps that contracts going forward for Belfast-based staff will be arranged in such a way that they will rotate through any main centre that is created in Dublin in such a way that high-quality skills will be preserved, and, and that the Belfast-based staff will not be allowed to de-skill or fragment? Well, Mr. Speaker, it's not for me to dictate to the people who are carrying out the report what, what they need to put in it, um, but I think it is a very obvious area uh, that will have to be assessed. And I don't want surgeons in Belfast uh, who are not maintaining their skills and, and developing uh, whilst others are, because very quickly that will become a second-rate service. Uh, so the opportunity to serve as, as, as part of a, a, a larger group, a larger team, be integral members of that team uh, strikes me as something that would be absolutely necessary. And uh, we will wait and see what the, what the report recommends, but I would be very surprised if a report recommended surgery being based in Belfast that did not um, have that type of integral uh, working uh, with the larger team in Dublin. Roy Banks. Mr. Banks. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And again, I thank the Minister for his statement. Under the evaluation uh, and scoring models, the Minister uh, uh, indicates that safety and the relationship to primary, secondary and emergency transport services will be considered. Uh, and he also indicated that clinicians wish to ensure the safety of children under their care. Can the Minister ensure the families that the health and well-being of those children who need urgent care and who may not be fit to travel and who may be affected by delay are giving appropriate weighting in this uh, uh, review so that uh, they are able to reach so they're able to reach the surgeons and receive the care that's needed. Well uh, our Ladies Hospital has advised Belfast Trust um, that it would not be able to guarantee at this time that it can continue to take the transfer of, of twenty to thirty emergency cases um, during twenty fourteen. So it is therefore essential that we do retain a, a service in Belfast. A surgical service in Belfast that, that can uh, support uh, if necessary. Uh, some of these children would have to travel to England as well. Um, so, given the nature and the complexities of all of these things, it has to be left entirely to the surgical teams and the clinic clinicians uh, to make those difficult decisions, in conjunction with talking to the parents, and the parents fully understand uh, all of the issues um, around it. So, 
In that respect, yes, we will have uh, an ambulance service that can uh, support the transfer of children, and we'll take whatever steps we need to to support um, children in those circumstances. Um, it is a relatively small number of circumstances vis-à-vis -vis, um, the elective model um, that is provided as well, but nonetheless it is absolutely critical to parents um, that we can guarantee them that support, and it will be guaranteed um, we will get them to the place which is most appropriate um, to carry out that surgery um, as quickly as possible. Mr. McRae. Mr. McRae. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, could the Minister explain why he is so defensive about this announcement? Uh, who is going to call him traitor Poots, and why do you think that would happen? Well, um, I'm not the least bit defensive. Uh, I outlined that this was purely a health issue and shouldn't be seen as, as anything else. And my priority is children in Northern Ireland, children with congenital cardiac problems. That has been my priority throughout and will be my priority whenever we arrive at the conclusion of this um, with the qualified recommendations that will come uh, from people of real expertise and knowledge who have provided care for children for many, many years. Robinson. Mr. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. <clears throat> Mr. Speaker, uh, can I thank the Minister for his statement? And as one who has suffered adult heart problems myself, can the Minister outline how challenging it has been to get to this very welcome point for children who have heart problems? Well, the challenges have been huge, and uh, I suppose a, a number of times it would have appeared that we're almost at the end of the road. Um, where massive pressure was being applied, and, and we have resisted that pressure. And uh, again, I, I recognise the support that Dr. Riley has been throughout the process. He has never been anything other than helpful uh, in respect of this. And uh, it will involve and has involved challenging. It's involved uh, pushing others, and um, I thank uh, him for that. And I greatly appreciate the fact um, that others are prepared to come to the table, offer their support to us in ensuring that we are able to provide a safe and sustainable service on congenital cardiac care uh, for children in Northern Ireland. Ian McRae. Mr. McRae. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And can I commend the Minister on the statement he's made today and also the, the families of those um, children who have been lobbying MLAs for for the excellent work that they've been doing to keep this matter to the fore. Um, can the Minister detail, he's mentioned um, in his statement, the uh, work with the um, Dublin Hospital. Can the Minister outline um, the number of operations that take place uh, in Dublin? And you know, is there evidence of the, the quality and expertise is, is there? Well, <coughs> between, uh, Dublin has between four and 500 surgeries. Uh, taking place each year, which uh, means that it has a, a high number of, of, of surgeries and, and enables them to have a full-time service. And it submits its data to the CCAD uh, to be audited and validated for quality. So I wouldn't be suggesting that we would use a service in Dublin if I didn't believe that the service in Dublin um, would be of the standards that we would get um, elsewhere in, in Great Britain. Um, but clearly it is more convenient to use services in Dublin than it is to use services in Great Britain, and therefore, um, where we have that quality validated, uh, it would make sense for parents to be able to avail of that uh, without having to fly uh, to Scotland or England. I also recognise that for parents in the south and the east of the province, it is less of an issue than parents in the north and the west of the province. So, Travelling from Belfast to Dublin is less than two hours now, but if you have to add on a journey from, for example, Ballycastle or Lumpen Derry or Castle Derg, uh, then that considerably adds to the journey. Uh, so that is one of the reasons that we want to ensure that we can provide support uh, in Belfast for parents, not just cardiology support but surgical support. Um, we want to retain as much service in Belfast as possible. And, uh, that is not guaranteed at this moment in time, but neither is it lost. And had we made a decision at this point, it would have been a negative decision. Uh, but I'm glad that we are in the position to fully test 
uh, the opportunities that there will be uh, to continue to provide such a service in Belfast. Robin Newton. Mr. Newton. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker, and uh, I welcome the Minister's statement and, like others, uh, join in, in congratulation to the Minister on his statement. Minister, you have appointed Dr. James Meyer, consultant cardiac cardiatric surgeon, uh, cardiac surgeon at Boston Children's Hospital, to head up the external group. Uh, how could you uh, address the issue, that, or the accusations indeed, that the outcomes of his work are already predetermined? Well, D Dr. Meyer uh, is, is a person who comes with huge skills and experience, um, trained at, at Yale University and has been uh, also a professor of surgery at, at Harvard Medical School. Uh, so that is the standard of, of, of person that we're bringing in. He uh, leads on over 1,000 surgeries per year. Um, so he has all of the clinical expertise that anybody could ask for, but he also has a very clear uh, knowledge of the needs of families and identified that very clearly directly to me whenever we met that the parental support, parents having confidence in the facility that they have come used to, become used to using, um, and uh, their ability to actually meet the needs of other members of the family who may be at home, uh, are all very, very important issues. So he was very clear that it isn't just about the clinician side of, 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 of what needs to be done clinical side of what needs to be done. It's also about what the family's needs are. Uh, so whilst I can't guarantee what the outcome will be, um, I have confidence that he will give due consideration to all of these issues uh, and, and ensure that uh, the views of families are heard as well as that of clinicians. Uh, Jim Allister. Mr. Allister. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I think the Minister is well aware of the genuine concern that in the interim period, there shouldn't be any further weakening of the Belfast service. Given that Professor Woods is retiring, and given the inference from his answer to Mr. Uh, Wells that recruitment may wait out the stability that will come from the review, how does he guarantee uh, to all and sundry that there will, in the interim, be surgery and the interventions which people are looking for and need in Belfast. How can that be guaranteed? Well, the surgical support needs to come from uh, Dublin in this instance. Uh, we have the theatre capacity. We have the anaesthetists. We have the nursing team. We have the, the cardiologists. Um, where we lack capacity is in actual surgeons. And that is a matter for uh, the teams to work out, um, the clinical teams. Um, as they work together. And uh, I think that it's important that uh, we recognise that they have expressed a willingness to support our service, um, that the final issues are, are, are being tied down um, over the course of the next number of days, and that surgery will continue in Belfast in a safe and sustainable way um, whilst we arrive at a final solution um, on this issue. So again, we should view positively um, any support that we are being given here. And uh, I think that it is excellent news that uh, surgeons in Dublin are prepared to support the Belfast service uh, whilst this report is being carried out. Mr. Agnew. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I, I welcome this statement today and congratulate the Children's Heartbeat Trust and the parents um, on their campaign and keeping this high on our agenda. The Minister outlined in his statement uh, he stated quite clearly that parents should not be placed in a position of having to travel overseas with their child, but uh, later on acknowledges that, that, that in some cases parents will be required to travel to England for surgery. Could I ask the Minister what priority is being given to reducing or indeed eradicating the need to transfer children over to England for services? Well, I think that uh, Mr. Agnew needs to recognise the complexity. And in fact, uh, uh, there was 42 children travelled to England in 2010-11, 36 travelled uh, in 2011-12, and in 2012-13 there was 34. So, 
what I would like to see is the capacity being developed in as far as possible, uh, both in Dublin and Belfast, to, to do as many surgeries as possible. However, uh, the members need to understand that the complexity of this surgery um, on a little heart the size of an acorn is, is absolutely uh, massive. And the skills that are required uh, to actually um, repair these hearts uh, are very, very extensive. And we need people who are doing this day and daily at a particular level. And in some instances, only England will be able to provide that service. And it is really good that we have England to provide us that service. And we shouldn't uh, be disparaging in any way, shape or form, uh, because they are providing the best possible service to these families. And I have to say that the, the, the safety that is being delivered is excellent. And the numbers of children who are actually coming through um, these complex uh, surgical procedures is really, really remarkable. So I, I can't praise highly enough all of those who are engaged in this kind of work, whether they be based in Belfast, Dublin, or indeed uh, on mainland Britain. Paul Gibbon. Mr Gibbon. Thank you, uh, Speaker. Can I commend the Minister for his determination to resist the pressure that has been placed upon him by officialdom uh, and uh, withholding a rushed decision because it may not have been the right one? Um, in terms of this announcement today, can he assure us that officials both within his department and those uh, that are there to support Minister Riley will be working to get the solution that we all want uh, in Northern Ireland and the best care for patients? Well, uh, I'm, I'm confident that will be the case and I'm confident that officials recognise that um, we won't be pushed around on this particular issue. Uh, one of the things that gave me huge confidence in all of this you know, it's one thing parents telling you that they would like something to happen. The cardiologists have always been confident that a service could be provided in Belfast. And I met Prof Professor Wood and, and indeed, uh, Professor Austin, Dr. Austin, uh, who were the surgeons, and they were confident it could be provided in Belfast. So I was getting the right messages, not just from parents, but from the clinical teams, that it is achievable. Now, it may be difficult to achieve, that's a different matter, but it is achievable and therefore we must do our best to ensure that that is the case and that we move heaven and earth to actually achieve something for our children if that is at all possible. Um, so everything that we can do to, to make this happen um, will be done and that doesn't guarantee that it happens, but at least people have the confidence um, that some administrator won't say, oh, we don't need that service anymore, we can, we can provide that elsewhere. Everything that can be done to maintain this service in Belfast will be done if we come here in six or seven months' time and say that the service can't be provided in Belfast. It won't be because people haven't tried their very best to make sure that that's the case. Order, members, that includes questions.